How do we stop looking and just settle in? Just settling into our body, settling into the room that we're in, or the outdoors, if we're outdoors. How wonderful it could be to just inhabit your voice, your your breathing, your literally vocal cords that are vibrating as you speak. And I'm talking about myself because that's just my experience at this exact moment, but fill in the blank for yourself as to what you're doing. And Fragments of moments and little bits and pieces here and there is where we find ourselves as there is a sense of continuity within all of this fragmented, seemingly disconnected matter, the continuity between, among, within, around, in, out, inside, or some somehow 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 you find another moment with another moment connected in time connected by thoughts which can only whisper around the edges of the bend in the light that actually illuminates what is. So it's always out of reach. It's always apparently or seemingly elsewhere when we all share it in this moment, we're all experiencing, we're breathing it in this moment. We're all vibrating in this moment. I've been searching or not searching for however many years, however many decades, however many lifetimes. And if I were to continue along the path that I've trodden, I couldn't tell you where it is that I'll end up. So why would I even speculate about it? Knowing that I can't possibly know where it is that I'm going. What else could I possibly do besides stop and look and see where I am? Thinking complicates all of this. And we always have some kind of rationale for 
the attachment to the thinking like, but I have to, or I need to, or I want to, or you don't understand. It's like this, or it's different, or it's special, or it's something else. And all of that protesting may very well be the material of our lives. It may very well be the stuff that makes up who we are that we will defend till the bitter end. And we will, and when other people point that out to us, we'll defend it. Right now, I'm just, I'm just wondering if I can find a sense of presence of embodiment. I cringe at those words, but what else could I say? A sense of coming into contact. Again, I cringe at that. A sense of beingness, maybe. Because the body is warm. The body is full, rich, and dark, and light, but it's fluid, it's wobbly. Um, spacious. Here in this body, with all of its aches and pains, we arrive, coming home, or if you will, coming back, or being, becoming something of that nature. becoming what we are. It's not an idea. Not a process or not a action.
my sincerest wish for me and for all of us is that we are able to find a sense of belonging and becoming and being a sense of warmth and embodiment and connectedness to drop those illusory boundaries, barriers that separate us from feeling fulfilled and feeling whole and feeling at home and at peace. that we will be able to arrive in this moment with all of ourselves, with all of, not even with all of us, but fully to arrive, to fully arrive. Completeness, completion, like the totality and whole, to be whole. where there is nothing lacking, there is nothing separate, or there's no distance between here and there, which creates a sense of endless stress or tension. And it's hard to it's part of the experience of all of it too, is that stress and that tension. Welcoming that into the experience perpetually. Um, you know, warmly embracing all of that stress and that tension. And it can be the work of a lifetime and something that we may not feel ever capable of doing. And um, because when we actually do that, there is no more fight after that. The fight is over. And we don't ever pick up our banner again and raise it and go off to war. It's just over at that point. So to actually drop that for good Personally, I feel like it's a risk for me, just me. And it is in different ways and on multiple levels as well. But it's my hope that someday soon I will be able to arrive and find a sense of belonging and home and arrive home and be myself for having lived an entire lifetime knowingly perpetuating a lie has been agonizingly painful for me, knowingly perpetuating a lie. And all that time believing it was within my control or my choice, when in reality, it seems as though I actually didn't have as much control as I thought I did. I thought that I could just tell the truth. I thought that I could just be myself. And in order to survive and to arrive at this moment, It 
it seems as though, while this may not be true, but it seems as though I had to continue lying, continue diverting all of my life force and energy to perpetuating somebody's false idea of reality. And I'm not yet sure how I personally will be able to process that and acknowledge that I don't know what it's going to take for me to maybe there needs to be some kind of understanding or some kind of insight or some clarity as to what may have happened. And eventually somehow a letting go may happen. And It's not for lack of trying. Because I have been thinking about this for more than 20 years. I'm 39 years old now, and I definitely was thinking about this when I was 17. So at least 22 years, if not longer. And I, I grieve for those years, all of my 20s and all of my 30s. I remember when I turned 30 and I said, you know, this has been so difficult to get through these 20s and I've had to lie and hurt myself and live a lie and waste all of these 20s because they could have been amazing. They could have been beautiful. But instead, I just had to lie and lie and lie and hurt myself so badly. Uh, it's so, it was so difficult to get through it. And when I turned 30, I said, you know what? Now I know that that was really hard and I know that you're feeling like very old by, by now. And when I was 30, I really did feel about 80. And I said, you know, it's time to make a change and I'm gonna, now I'm gonna step into my life. And not only did I not do that, I couldn't do it. And I continued to support lies and support other people. And I was not able to live my life from 30 to now 39 and probably up till the time I'm 40. And at this point I have to say, you know what, Charles, you gave it a good go. You did try for 22 or 25 years earnestly to actually be yourself and it wasn't it wasn't for a lack of trying but you weren't able to do that the risks were too great in terms of the harm that could have been done more permanently to me and so i've taken the slow route rather than the yolo and um i do believe that it's prob I don't know. I actually don't know. There's no way to know. Well, I don't know that there's no way to know, but I'm just saying that to make myself feel better. But I do remember being 16, 17, 18, and wanting so desperately to tell everyone, listen, all you have to do is just be honest with yourself. Just live honestly, everything else will be fine. And I believed that, I truly believed it because my own experience told me that. And no matter what I did and no matter what I said, I could not do that for myself. It was too difficult because of perceived environmental threats to my continued existence. In other words, what's the point of being honest if I'm going to die for it? It didn't seem fair. And it still doesn't. And I don't know. 
I don't know why or how it all turned out the way that it did. But it's been very painful, very, very painful and serious, not fun. Not everyone gets to have a fun life. Not everyone. Many people do not. There are no guarantees. No one is owed anything. If you can make good choices and you have, I'm not going to get into it. Everyone's life is so different and so unique. You can't make sweeping statements about anything. You can't make generalizations. But we can support each other, knowing just how challenging this life can be. We can have compassion, especially for those of us who have gone through extreme difficulties. It's very easy to have compassion for others, but sometimes we forget to do that because we become so engrossed in our own challenges as they become more and more painful. Um, that's been my experience. And the isolation can be deafening, but we'll see what tomorrow brings. We'll see what today brings. Be open and be available to what it brings. What's available right now. What is available right now? What is so abundantly available right now that all we have to do is hold out our hands and there it is. We don't have to go anywhere to get it. We don't have to, you know what I'm saying? What is it that's just right here and just available? And there's so much of it and it, there's infinite amounts of it. Just, you don't even have to take it. It's just, it's just there. What is that? What is it that's available right now? That's available in ever present. That's never not there. It's never lacking. It's never missing or empty or anything like that. It's just full and it's just available, completely available right now. What is that? Where we don't have to prove ourselves. We don't have to achieve anything. We don't have to act a certain way and we don't have to hold ourselves in any which position. We don't have to say anything or we don't have to avoid saying things. We can just... Everything that we are and everything we say and everything we do and all moments of that are completely acceptable in this particular perspective. Some people might call it ultimate truth. Okay, well, calling it something like that is not very illuminating to me personally, but hey, if that works for you, then great. 
you know, whatever works for you. Because it works for you. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not working against you. It's working with you. It is you. It is you. So where do we make that connection? Where do we find that connection? Or where do we, where's the contact point uh, if, if there is such a thing? Where is the sort of dissolution of wrong perceptions or ideas that make it seem other than what it is that I might be describing? It's not something you can find anywhere up here in your head. It's not like, there's no, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. But is there a train of thought or a logical argument or <laughs> pathway that will arrive in such a place? I don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't think so. I think that you could force your way to such a place by pointing your mind as hard as you can in a direction until it just gives up. I think that's possible. And um, in certain situations, I might encourage that. But otherwise, it's still going to be a let it go of that's kind of the direction that would arrive at that point. So what when I say that point, anyway, at this point, I would end the conversation, which I'm going to do. Because um, I've just been talking for a while and I should probably give it a few days to whatever, you know? I don't like the sound of my own voice, really. So anyway, I shouldn't say that. I, I say, well, I guess, you know what? I like to say a lot of negative things about myself because I'm uncomfortable in this moment of like transition. You know, I have, I have a hard time with the saying goodbye or ending, the endings. And yeah, I mean, there's always the choice to focus on the endings or the beginnings. I could be focusing on the fact that, well, I'm going somewhere else now to do something else that's equally interesting and fun than what I'm doing right now, maybe even more so, but it's not about that. It's just a matter of how we choose to orient our mind. But I wish that it didn't sound like I had any clue what I was talking about. I want to convey, I want to emphasize that I just don't really know what I'm talking about. I think that's the main point is I'm just trying to have a conversation and hopefully come closer to myself, to feeling at ease with myself, I guess. really just gonna have to say goodbye now. So, goodbye.